Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was in the hash shell to the prone. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, I'm a young man now, but as a child, I absolutely love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was probably my favorite cartoon of all time at the time as a little boy. But now that I'm grown, I still have a huge fan base for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, look, I still have part one, two, and three of the live action 90s series that came out a long time ago. And I love this series. So back in 2014, when we found out that Michael Bay will be producing a new rebooted Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was excited, a little skeptical because they did have to do with Michael Bay and he was my favorite director of all time until Transformers Revenge of the Fallen came out and you know he's still a good director and I'll get to that lately but he wasn't directing this film it was Jonathan Leesman he's the guy that did um, Wrath of Titans and he also did Battle Los Angeles and those movies were pretty good to okay but now we have a new director uh, at the helm for part two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows and that is Dave Green he did Earth to Echo and I thought Earth to Echo was a cute little movie now my expectations for part two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows was very low because I did not like the first movie at all pretty much hated it I thought it was abomination to the live action movie in the 90s I thought it was an abomination to the cartoon back at the early not early but late 80s early 90s I mean I just thought that the origin story for the turtles was all over the place it was a lot of plot points that just didn't make sense to me I did like the personality of the turtles and I will say that in the 2014 film my most favorite part was the turtles elevator scene I honestly was laughing pretty hard during that scene but overall I did not care for that movie so when part two was coming out I really didn't care for that either so like I said going into this movie i had very very low expectations some of the earlier reviews on rotten tomatoes start popping up and all these other sites and you know just the word of mouth wasn't spreading around that good but i still wanted to go in with an open mind because while i did not enjoy the film the first time i did like the personality of the turtles i just did not like the direction that they went with the entire picture as it just seeming so extremely goofy with CGI characters everywhere, I would have preferred like live action costumes, but going into part two, I just had to accept it for what it was and tried to have a good time. And initially I did. As soon as the movie started out, you get to see all the turtles acting like their young teenage selves, acting like kids, bumbling all around doing action adventure ninja type stuff. And it was quite entertaining and it was quite funny. And it just kind of lets you know the life that these turtles are living in the big city of New York. And I was on board with their characters and even how the CGI looked. It didn't look bad. It's kind of it's kind of hard to pick one turtle out of them all to say who is my absolute favorite. If you know these characters, you know that they're very different. They're not always the leader. Raphael, Raphael, Raphael is the attitude or in this movie they called him the muscle Michelangelo is the goofy personality and Donatello is the brains and just for fun if I had to pick one character out of them all that I like the best I would probably go with Leo I just think that he's just real cool laid back real easy going type of guy great leader I don't know I just gravitate towards him more than all the other turtles but I do love them all I mean they were great in the first film and they were great in this film too their personality is just perfect I think whoever had to do with that the studio the writing the director whatever they hit that out of the park with the person personality of the turtles and I don't think they could have did a better job than they did here as far as Splinter is concerned I'm still not really in love with Splinter. I don't know why, but it's just something about his character and his voice that just does not remind me of the Splinter that I used to know and love from way back in the day. Yes, of course, this is a new adaptation and things are going to change and things are going to be different, but I like the Turtles, but I just didn't like Splinter. Now, someone that they're adding to the mix of characters. Well, actually, before I get there, let's just talk about Megan Fox. I mean, she's fine 
And I don't mean that literally like as in me finding her attractive. I mean, she's an attractive woman. But I mean, as far as her role as April O'Neil, she's fine. She She's not great. She doesn't suck. She's just there. Anyone could be playing this role. The movie had to give you a reason for her to want to be stripping her clothes off. And yes, they did have a little scene with that, as you saw in the trailers. I was going to bring up another character, but he's just not worth mentioning, in my opinion. Now, another character that they did bring into the fold was K Casey Jones, played by Stephen Amell, the guy that plays Arrow on the CW show. He did an OK job, but his Casey Jones, to me, is just a little friendly for my taste. If you know part one and part two of the 90s movie, you know that Casey Jones is kind of a badass. He's kind of rough around the edges. He's kind of someone that has a, a rough lifestyle, you know, somebody that you wouldn't run across. I did not get that vibe at all from Casey Jones. He was a cool character, but it just, um, I was going to say this does it just his character didn't seem realistic. But then again, how realistic can a character seem in a movie titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? And I'll touch on that later. But what I did like about his character is how he did fit in with the rest of the Turtles and April O'Neil and just how they incorporated him within the rest of the plot and the story. I won't spoil it for you here, but I thought that was creative because it would have been kind of hard just to, you know, get a random hockey rough sticking person and throw him into the mix with the Turtles. That's already weird when you're talking about Krang and Shredder and all that, which I'll get to in a second. But as far as his character, he was okay. I wasn't in love with him, but I did like the way he tied in with the story. As far as Shredder is concerned, I mean, okay, he looked cool. I still prefer the Shredder in the 90s cartoon. Not the 90s cartoon, but the, the 90s live action movie. He seemed like more of a badass than this. This is just an Asian guy that looks threatening. Well, he's trying to look threatening, but they don't really give him much material to look threatening with. Other than his cool looking ninja suit and shredder armor. That does look cool. He looks like he just wants to slice people up for no reason. And I guess that's the point. So I think they won there. As far as Baxter Stockman is concerned, played by Tyler Perry. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't like it. It was 50-50. I mean, I kind of felt that he was too muscular to try to play the role that he was playing. You know, I'm somewhat of a fan of Tyler Perry. I'm 50-50 with him as well as well with his role in the movie. Some of his acting performances in his films I like, some I don't like. And some of the quips that Baxter Stockman, him as Tyler Perry played in this movie, I like some of them I did not like. I mean, sometimes he was really acting nerdy and geeking out and whatnot, and that made me laugh. But other times it came across that he was a smooth, suave type of character that forgot to be nerdy the whole time. And so there was a little inconsistency there. Um, at times it was a little bit over the top, just goofy for no reason to be goofy. But then again, what else can you expect from a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows movie? Bebop and Rocksteady character favorites of mine as a child. Of course, they was not in this series right here, but they were in the cartoon and possibly two worst characters I've ever seen on screen. But I keep saying this. Then again, I mean, Brandon, this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you know that there is a character that turns into a rhino and a warthog. But I just don't understand why they had to make them so stupid and ignorant. I mean, you could have had them like to be bumbling dorks. But I mean, my goodness gracious, you just did not have to tone them down to this level of stupidity. I just don't think it was that necessary. There's going to be a lot of children that are going to like it. And if that's what the studio is going for, hey, bravo. You know, you won there. But with their crazy personality along with the ridiculous looking cgi i just was not a fan of their characters and wanted them to die off immediately now like i said at the beginning of this review i really was on board at the beginning i mean it started out with laughs and we got to see the the turtles personality and how they just you know was getting on with life in new york you saw what was important to them and how they grown from the first film and it the film had a simple plot the bad guys are trying to take over the world, and in order for them to try to take over the world, they have to execute, execute A, B, and C, and the turtles have to stop them, and I was along with the ride. I mean, there were some things that were making me frustrated here and there, but they were just little nitpicks, and I was just saying to myself that, you know, man, I really am enjoying this film a lot more than I am enjoying the first film, and I think that's because there was no origin story, and they were not trying to make the turtles look all cool. I mean, I was just embracing what the film was giving me and accepting 
what it was for what it was. But all that turned over a uh, complete 180 and was going the opposite direction when they got to that scene in the trailers to where they were on the plane. And when they were trying to get on the plane, that was cool. But actually, when the turtles got inside the plane and they were trying to do their thing to stop the day involved with Bebop and Rocksteady, that is when the whole film just took a nerve dive into the ground, crashed, burned, and exploded with no evidence, residue, or DNA left over. I mean, it was just a flaming hot mess after that. And I, it just kept going lower and lower and lower. Just The film just got dumber and dumber and dumber. And you may consider this a spoiler, but I just don't care. I don't understand if you are a character trying to live, that if you are in a plane that is thousands of feet in the sky... So while you will pull out a 50 caliber machine gun that is on the back of a tank and open fire. How do you expect to escape out of this? You're going to blow the plane away and kill yourself along with everybody else. And that was just one of the decisions that one of the characters made that I was just not on board with. And everything after that just was just a complete flaming pile of dog shit. I just don't understand what happened, if why they changed the tone so much at that point. It made absolutely no sense to me. And I was thinking to myself as I'm watching the movie, like, who in their right mind pitched this? And I just wish I was a fly on the wall in that meeting. Like, okay, and then we're going to have the turtles in the sky. And then some guy's going to blow it up and all the wings are going to fall off. And then the front of the plane is going to blow open and that's going to explode. And it's going to have smoke and fire everywhere. And then the turtles going to be flipping around. And it's not going to like it's making sense, but that's okay because... People just want to spend their money on anything and it just doesn't really matter. They're dumb and we're just going to feed them a whole bunch of dumb CGI. I mean, it, it, that's just kind of like the pitch that was going on in my head as I was watching this scene and I just wasn't enjoying it at all. But then it comes down to the final battle and it's not even a battle. It is CGI characters versus a CGI bad guy fighting on a whole CGI platform. It, the whole screen is just CGI, CGI. And you, they're not even fighting. It's just a bunch of characters jumping on on top of each other, rolling around. There is no stakes left in this film. You don't care because nothing looks real. Everyone is making dumb decisions. It's over-the-top silly, over-the-top goofy. I mean, it's just dialing it down to the level of a preschooler. And I'm sorry, but that is just not for me. And it may be for you, but it's just not for me. I know I still have, I mean... You may want to say, well, Brandon, I'm, hey, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out over 20 years ago. Maybe you're just going out of it. I think not because I still like this film. Well, except for part three. I like part one and part two. I mean, they're a lot of fun. I just wish that the films could take a more serious tone that these took right here than this five-year-old CGI garbage that Michael Bay's uh, production company, Platinum Dooms, has given us. No, I know he did not direct the film. Dave Green did, but his stamp is all over this film. It felt like Transformers was thrown up all over this to where some of the shots were being made, uh, some the way the score and the music was coming in, the way that was cute. I was just, oh, Transformers, Transformers. This is not Transformers. I mean, why is it? I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get frustrated and talk about it anymore, but overall, the film just wasn't for me. Um, I, I didn't care for it too much. I really did enjoy it in the beginning. I, I really was um and just another nitpick i don't know why casey jones is able to beat up all these ninjas and whatnot i mean the foot served no threat either i mean i don't know but the movie wasn't for me but um maybe it will be for you so if i had to rate teenage mutant ninja turtles out of the shadows out of a one out of a ten i'm just going to split it right down the middle and give it a five out of ten yes a five out of ten but that's just my opinion guys so have you seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel to become one of my subscribers to get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future.
Also, if you like a written review of this, you can head over to the site. That's www.justmyopinion.net. Find me at facebook.com slash justmyopinion or other social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter at justmyopinion84. And guys, share the video. I'm not going to get mad if you share the video. I'll tell you what, I will keep it between me and you. But thanks again, guys, for tuning in for my review slash opinion of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brent Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.